With the recent news about Life360's data selling business and some question as to whether or not they're doing enough to anonymize that data before selling it, I figured it was time to talk about a more private presence detection method. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. One of my first videos on YouTube was how I set up presence detection. And as of today, it's one of my most watched videos. And since my start with SmartThings back in 2014, Life360 has been part of my presence detection system. And since that time, I've recommended Life360. Their app and the Home Assistant integration for their service works really well. But the information that has recently come to light about Life360 gives us reason to choose a different path. If you haven't seen the news, I'm of course talking about the recent article from The Markup. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at the article, you of course should, and there's a link to it in the description of this video. Just wait till after you've watched this video, you know, for the retention metrics. But if you are using Life360, I suggest opening that app right now and heading to Settings, Privacy and Security, and clicking that Do Not Sell My Information box. Here you could find a toggle that tells Life360 that you don't want them to sell your data. Of course, there's no guarantees that this toggle does anything. After all, in my opinion, if Life360 was serious about protecting your data, this would have been an opt-in, not an opt-out. But regardless of whether that toggle works or not, in this video, I want to walk you through setting up a more private presence detection method with Home Assistant. And for that, we're going to use OwnTracks. OwnTracks is an open source app that works on Android or iOS and it was built as a way for you to share your location with friends or a service of your choice without going through a cloud service. Which means we can also use this app to share our location data with Home Assistant without involving another service. To set this up, you will of course need the OwnTrax app on your phone. Second, your Home Assistant instance is going to need to be open to the world. After all, the whole point of this is to send your location data from your phone to Home Assistant. And third, in Home Assistant, we're going to need to set up the OwnTracks integration. To set up the OwnTracks app on your phone, just download it from your phone's app store. You won't need to set up a login to a cloud service to use this app. In fact, before this app starts sending your location data anywhere, it needs to be told where to send it. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you can log into your Home Assistant instance from anywhere in the world. For those of you using Nabucasa, you're already good. For those that haven't set up their Home Assistant instance for remote access, you're going to need to do that first before you can set up the rest of this integration. There are simply way too many variables and different ways to do that, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. And if you're not willing to open your instance to the world, then there's really no point in the OwnTracks app, because the whole purpose was meant for sending your location data when you're not on your network. So, if you've got your Home Assistant instance ready to go, let's jump in and install the integration. In Home Assistant, head to Integrations. Here, we'll click Add and search for OwnTracks. When you find it, click it and add it. You'll get a screen with lots of secret stuff. If you're using Nabucasa, these URLs will point to Nabucasa. If not, all of the URLs should be your external domain. You'll also get an encryption key as well, and some instructions for each mobile OS. I would just copy all of the data on this screen and save it someplace safe. You're going to need to be able to put this info in your phone. I don't own any Android devices, so all I can show you is what it looks like on the iPhone. But in iOS, you open up the OwnTracks app. Click this little I in the upper left, and then click Settings. Here, the mode should be HTTP. Tracker ID can be left alone, unless you want to use it. It does show up as an attribute, so if you have multiple phones, you could always use this to help tell them apart. Device ID will be important, since this is an iPhone 11, that's what I put. I would avoid spaces, and you don't need to put any other identifying information in here, because Home Assistant is going to add your username to whatever device ID you put here as an entity ID inside Home Assistant. User ID should be your Home Assistant user ID. Turn on authentication, but leave the password off. 
The secret encryption key here is the one we copy from the integration window. And the URL should be the one you copied from there as well. After that, click Status Info, and you should get some indication that a new device has been added. If you didn't, your device may already be set up, or it can't communicate with your Home Assistant instance. And now, you should have a new device tracker powered by OwnTracks. Which means you can update your person entity to include your OwnTracks device tracker. Or, in my case, remove the Life 361 and replace it with one that's a bit more private. If your presence detection automations leverage the person entities, there are no other changes you need to make. They should start using your own tracks data. If you haven't started to leverage presence detection in your Home Assistant setup, let me walk you through my setup. Like I mentioned earlier, I did a video a while back detailing how I set this up. But honestly, this is one of the parts of my setup that gets constantly tweaked. The big use case I have is my security system, which uses the presence detection information to determine whether it should arm or disarm the security system. And as of this video, the main source of truth for that status is a group. The group entity is just called family, and it contains all of the person entities I want to use to determine whether or not the family is home or away. If any one of the members of that group are home, then the status of the group is home. When every member of that group is not home, then the status is not home, which means it's perfect for triggering automations. And in this case, I have two. Family has arrived and family has left. The family has left is pretty simple, so let's start there. Family has left has one trigger. Anytime that family group goes from the state home to not home, and it has a condition to check if guest mode is off. Guest mode allows me to bypass some of these automations because when guests are here, it's a little harder to determine whether everyone has left or if there's someone still here. So if guest mode is on, I don't want the normal stuff happening. But if it's off, then we fire the family is away script. That script handles all the work. And I use a script, of course, because I want other automations to be able to kick off those tasks. But you could just as easily drop all of the actions from that script into this automation. The family is away script, make sure that the family is truly away. Again, this condition is in there so that if something else fires this, then I make sure this gets checked. Then it turns off the appliances and lights. This could be done better, but I haven't got around to improving it, like so many other things in this configuration. Then we turn on sentry mode. I'm not gonna talk security in this video, but flipping this switch actually kicks off a bunch of checks to make sure that the house can be secured. If doors are open, then this switch just turns off. And we turn off all of the fans. And we turn on the Welcome Home Input Boolean. This one I use to tell Home Assistant that it needs to play the full welcome briefing when we come home and not just the, hey, Jeff has arrived. Then anytime the family group goes from not home to home, we fire the family has arrived automation. This one is a bit more involved because I combined multiple automations into one. That's why there are more triggers. It doesn't matter who triggers it though, the first thing it does is fire the family as home script. This script makes sure that we are in fact home, then disarms the security. And that's essentially it. For basic presence detection, all you need is a way to determine when all of the members of the house are home or when they're away. And a group works well for this because when all the members are away, then the state of the group is not home. After that, you just need an automation that triggers on the state change of that group and then triggers either all of the actions when you return or all of the actions when you leave. And hopefully that gives you enough to get started with own tracks in your presence detection system. Before we head off to automate the boring stuff, I wanna rant for a bit. If it wasn't obvious, the recent news about Life360 is what inspired me to make this video. Now, I don't think it should be any shock to anyone that Life360 sells your data. After all, the resources needed to run a cloud service are not free. And if a company is not getting that money from you, then they're getting that money from somewhere else. In fact, I suspect in many cases, even if you are paying, the money that they are receiving from you is not enough to cover their overhead costs since the price that we will normally pay for a service like this is not anywhere close to the true cost. But there does seem to be some question as to whether or not Life360 is doing everything they can to protect our data before they sell it. And for me, that's a big issue. And while I'm going to limit Life360 in my Home Assistant instance as much as possible for the time being, I'm not going to tell you that all cloud services are bad and that they should be avoided. 
But I do understand a lot of people believe that. And I've seen some people using this news as a case in point for that argument. Don't get me wrong, it's important to know how these cloud services are using your data and to understand the risk to you when you're using a solution that you don't fully control. But the reality of just adding smart capabilities to a dumb device is going to increase the ways that it can be exploited, and it's going to introduce failure points that you can't control. And while local-only devices offer some risk mitigation by limiting where those devices can be accessed from and exploited from, you're still going to have to be comfortable with what you're giving up in exchange for more convenience because that convenience is never free. For me, those cloud services need to be more upfront about what they're doing with our data, since we're giving them that data in exchange for a specific product. I mean, if I gave money to Philips Hue in exchange for some bulbs, and then took those bulbs that I received in exchange for that money, scratched the Philips Hue name off of them, did some other minor modifications to anonymize where those bulbs originated from, and then resold them as Slacker Labs Hue bulbs, I suspect Philips would take issue with that. And in my opinion, that's how our data should be treated. And instead of trying to force cloud companies to provide local only options, I would rather force all companies to pay us for our data if they take that data and create new products to sell, almost like copyright for our personal data. Anyway, that's probably enough ranting. If you want to support Slacker Labs and our mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find a link to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store in the description of this video. And I promise I will never sell your data. Or you can just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.